Hi, welcome to NASA Launchpad. I'm your host, Vince Whitfield. There are all sorts of sciences out there, most of which you have taken in school. Chemistry, biology, astronomy, physics. Well, you get the point. But there's a newcomer to the world of science, and it goes by the name of astrobiology. And as the name sort of implies, it's the science concerned with life beyond Earth, but also the origin and evolution of life on Earth. Since there is currently no proof of life anywhere other than Earth, and astrobiology is a study of life off-world, scientists want to search for it. But how? Well, there are certain indicators that scientists look for that may point to life elsewhere in the cosmos. One you've probably heard us talk about a lot here on NASA Launchpad is water, but a special indicator you may not know much about is methane. On Earth, a huge portion of methane, over 95%, is formed by biological processes, and the rest of the methane is formed geologically, like within a volcano. So, you might be asking yourself, where is all this methane on Earth? Cows? Swamps? Well, those are some of the cliché answers. So let's check in with someone who has a better take on the whole thing. Dr. Michael Moomer, senior scientist in the Solar System Exploration Division of NASA, who can fill us in on some of the biological reasons for methane on Earth. Uh, one of the standard questions uh, people ask is, how is methane formed on Earth? And uh, is it always coming from cows? <laughs> About 95% of methane found in Earth's atmosphere actually comes from biological processes. Not necessarily from living creatures, but also from decay of their residue. Uh, the buried organics, like coal, uh, has a lot of methane in it, and that methane was biologically produced. Pretty much any life, be it plant life or animal life, creates methane as it decays. So buried organics, like coal or organic waste in landfills, produce methane as they begin to break down. And yes, cows do produce methane, as do other hoofed animals, and even you. Methanogens, a special type of extremophile, obtain their energy by making methane gas from other organic compounds. In your case, the harsh conditions where these bacteria live just happen to be in your digestive system. These prokaryotes are also found in different environments, such as swamps. Cows and swamps, just like I said. What about the other 5% of methane on Earth? Where does that come from? You can also produce methane on Earth by means of uh, hot water re reacting with hot rock uh, in the mantle of the Earth, deep below the surface, where the temperatures are high. So, if 95% of methane on Earth is produced by biological processes, it stands to reason that if we find methane on another planet, we have increased chance of finding life, right? Well, guess what? Scientists have recently found methane on Mars. We've d actually detected methane from three discrete uh, source regions on the planet. Um, we don't know at present uh, which uh, of several processes is responsible for the methane, but there can really only be two uh, principal candidates. Uh, one possibility is that the methane, uh, like most methane on Earth, is produced by microbial activity. These would be uh, bacteria or microbes, uh, as we call them, or another domain of life called archaea that might still be uh, living below the surface of Mars where they're protected from the intense radiation field of the sun and also from cosmic rays uh, and could now be uh, prospering and releasing methane into the atmosphere. On the other hand, it could be that uh, Mars is not a totally dead planet um, geochemically that may still have some internal activity. Uh, one signature of such activity would be to see methane that's being produced by a uh, chemical process in which one form of iron oxide is converted to another. This happens on, the, on Earth uh, in several discrete places, and so we, we are looking uh, distinctly for this on Mars. So, how is it that scientists like Dr. Muma are able to find methane in the atmosphere of a distant planet? Well. It's a very involved process, but a simple answer is spectroscopy. When light from the sun hits the planet's surface, some of that light is reflected back into space. Spectrometer instruments attached to telescopes in Hawaii captured some of that reflected light and separated it into its component colors. The result was a spectrum with missing wavelengths, where gases in Mars's atmosphere absorbed extra sunlight. As a result, the scientists have observed and mapped several methane plumes on the red planet. Because methane is quickly destroyed in the Martian atmosphere, the discovery of these plumes means that some ongoing process is releasing the gas. Using spectroscopy, scientists can theoretically determine what the atmosphere on any planet is made of by seeing which key wavelengths in the reflected light are missing. 
But the answers for where the gases are coming from will be left up to future NASA missions, like the Mars Science Laboratory and its rover, appropriately named Curiosity. This is some pretty exciting stuff, folks, and it's only going to get more interesting. Scientists are looking for answers to questions that could potentially change the way we view life as we know it. Of course, uh, like most people on Earth who ever think beyond their own local environment, one always wonders how did life come to be, uh, what was the path of uh, evolution over time, how do we evolve, and so forth and so on. But the other question is how do planets evolve? Which ones will be uh, life-bearing? Were microbes transferred from uh, Mars to Earth or Earth to Mars in the early phase of our system when uh, planets were being bombarded by large bodies and then transferring material back and forth. So, if I were a high school student today and I had an interest in the origin of life, I would have to think that one of the most compelling things that one could imagine is to be a part of that search. Wow, count me in. Well, that's all the time we have now for this episode of NASA Launchpad. Until next time, I'm Vince Whitfield. Cheers. <laughs>